So what causes a hockey team one year to lose 60 games? Next year, with a shift of venue, seven players on that team eventually join together to win a Calder Cup championship. Well, if you know your history of the Binghamton Wheelers and the, Spring, uh, the Springfield version of the Rangers, it has to be the classic 89-90 season and the 90-91 season of the Binghamton and uh, its, uh, its successor, the Springfield Rangers. Now, uh, the, 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 the idea of the Bimington Whalers losing 60 games in the season was unheard of for most of the team's life because as a Hartford affiliate, they had really good prospects in the system. They had veteran players like John Anderson played three games with uh, that 60-loss team that year, even though he was coming back or went to Europe. They were, like I said, generally a successful team. They made the playoffs seven times, the original uh, Whalers, and all the way to the Collar Cup Finals in 82, losing to New Brunswick. However, in 90, they, they turned to Gasly 11, 60, and 9, dead last in the league. Now, they were formed for the 1980-81 season and again stayed there for a whole decade. That year's 194 winning percentage was the worst in NHL history at the time. After the season, the franchise was sold to New York Rangers and their, Paramount, and their parent company, Paramount Communications, who bought Paramount Pictures, were formerly Gulf and Wesson. So a movie studio saved the team. Now, uh, Daniel Bowden uh, had to request on this. Maybe he didn't know that Gulf and Wesson owned the uh, the Springfield version of the Rangers, but there you go. You knew there, was gonna, there could be a movie in there someplace. When he moved her affiliation to Springfield the next season, the seven remaining players from, again, that disaster year helped the uh, Indians to their seventh and final Calder Cup championship. Now, the market was previously served by the broom dusters of the NAHL, uh, then the Bimington Rangers, of course, the AHL, 90-97, the BC Icemen of the UHL, 97-2002, the Binghamton Senators of the IHL 202-2017 and the Binghamton Devils of the AHL from 2017 to the, the modern era. Now, the Binghamton Whalers had a very interesting logo with just a Hartford logo turned sideways with a little bit more curvature to it. They played at the Broome County Veterans Memorial Arena, of course, in the beautiful community of Binghamton, uh, New York. Now, uh, again, the, uh, the curvature along the inside of the W on the logo was altered to more closely resemble the letter B for the team's whole city. Now, during home games, uh, here we go again, that Hartford Whalers goal song, Brass Banana Bonanza, na 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 would play when the Whalers scored a goal. Again, a practice adopted from the Hartford Whalers. Now, for all the years that were in Bebington before the bad season, they did quite well. They uh, finished third in 81, first with uh, 46 wins in 82, in the South, all the South Division, fourth in 83, sixth in 84, they won the division again in 85, 52, 28, were playing an 80-game season. 86, they were second in the South, as they were in 87, 88, 38, 31, and 8, they were playing over 500 for a number of consecutive years, and then the Meliers came in. 89, with not enough feeder from Hartford, because Hartford had a lot of injuries, they finished 28, 46, and 6, 7 in the South, and again, the disastrous 11, 60, and 9 uh, that year. Now, in, uh, in the, they made it in the second round in 82, uh, and in 85, and in 87, of course, losing to that great New Brunswick Hawks team of 82 after winning the first two rounds. Now, 80, 89 and 90, uh, it was one of the few times they were back-to-back -back out of the playoffs. Now, of course, Paul Fenton was a big player in the squad. He had 53 goals in 86. Ross Yates had uh, 83 point, 84 assists in um, in 83 for a team record, Paul Gardner, very underrated, 130 points in 85. Of course, the great Jim Thompson, big with the fist, had 360 minutes in penalties to lead Bington through the years. Sudorkowicz uh, was the top goalie for a few years, winning uh, the GA8 uh, record title in two with 292 and 87, and a 90% save percentage in 85. Fenton led all Bington players' career, 120 goals. Yates had 283 total points. Of course, Shane Charla, 723 minutes and penalties. Sorokin, which had 94 wins before he finally made it with Hartford, uh, and on and off. Sorokin, which had nine shutouts, and Dallas Gomi 
had uh, 273 uh, uh, games. Now, some of this information I'm taking days from BinghamtonHockey.net, which uh, covers the hockey history of uh, uh, in the Binghamton, New York region, and of course the Internet Hockey Database on the Binghamton Whalers. But just to break down what happened that season, and it's, it's quite bizarre. He had a very young team in 89-90, and he had some solid goal the pipes and the former Edmonton owner Dale, uh, Dale Ray Kay Whitmore who had a, a few cups of coffee with uh, Hartford through the years and of course the one game wonder Ross McKay who went that year 0-10-1 Whitmore was 3-19-2 and, and Daryl uh, Tall Drink of Water of course 8-31-6 he went from teammates with Gretzky all the way to the worst probably modern AHL team and 11-60-9, it wasn't Doug McKay, the head coach's fault. He had very little. Now, James Black, uh, the very talented defenseman, had 77 goals. A uh, big drink of water from Saskatchewan, only 20 years at the time. Uh, Gomi, or Gom, had 65 uh, points, the native of Innisfil, Alberta. Bobby Bodak had 32 goals as well. Chris uh, Ch Chikoki, hope I'm pronouncing it right. I was at trouble with Chris's name. And Blair Atchison. Atchenham had uh, 20 goals. So he had all these players at a 20 goal range and Michel Picard had a good year as well as a 19 year old with 40 points, 67 games. Really the only uh, household names were of course Jody Hall played uh, that year as a 20 year old. Jim McKenzie was there as well as a 19 year old and Chris Lindbergh as well. Now with Jimmy Thompson as well, he was he was a tough nut. Uh, we still talk about him in circles. And John Anderson played three games that year for two points. He was in the Hartford system before he moved on. Now, Daryl, uh, Prince George, a lot of people thought he was going to be the eventual backup to Fuhrer and Edmonton because with the departure of Andy Moog, didn't work out. And Norman McIver had a few games with them as well. But... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit of history about Daryl Ray, and this is this is kind of weird uh, to, to talk about. Loops over uh, two seasons, and he had that drink of water at Edmonton in, in '85. But stuck in there with the Nova Scotia six games, and all of a sudden he faded. Now he made up comeback in the AHL again for the Hartford system. '91, he, gave, he was given a chance, put up some decent numbers 7 7 and 1 with uh, a 3.15 average, so some brilliant play, but unfortunately never worked out from that. So he ended up being a Nazi, a career minor leaguer, but uh, he also played with Carpat in the SM Liga in '89. Uh, uh, it was pretty weird. But we always thought in Cape Breton that Daryl would get that one final chance, but Bill Ranford was in the mix as well. But Daryl Ray, probably one of the most cautionary tales, because so much potential, and I don't really think people gave him enough of a chance. Yeah, I knew he was I had some trouble with the 5-0, but that's another thing altogether. And um, some goalies in the league basically, Nazi spoke up for his behalf, but some of the minor league teams basically saying, you know, what what are you doing here? But he took a lot of, lot of, lot of shots in that, uh, that season in Binghamton. Ladies and gentlemen, not to, not to uh, not to uh, not to concern you too much, but the numbers tell the tale. Thirteen hundred and fifty-six shots. Thirteen hundred and fifty-six shots, ladies and gentlemen, in fifty-two games. That's all. That's all I can say. It speaks for itself. Uh, when you're 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 facing upwards of uh, 25 to 30 shots per game per game per game, it catches up to you, as we say. And what's uh, really uh, weird uh, that year as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you believe this, he had uh, he had every indication he was going to give a bigger chance. But I think he just put up with that season uh, the hold on as a possible number two or number three. But all I noticed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he he was he was someone that I always thought would make a, make an effort, and he made it with uh, Binghamton. Can you imagine if him and uh, him and Kay Whitmore were not in Binghamton that year? They could have lost 65 games. It could have been a lot worse, or even 70. 
you know, sometimes uh, we, we thank uh, Daniel for the request. And just remember, when you're in Binghamton uh, and you go to Springfield and you're bought by a movie company, there's got to be a movie out there someplace. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel that the AHL of the late 19... Uh, 80s and early 90s, there's got to be some tape out there of some of the news reports how, ba how bad Binghamton was that season. Because if you have nothing but losses to talk about, you have to talk about the key players. And like I said, the goaltending was talked about. I know for sure, because I saw some reports saying the, uh, something like the uh, the best the best 60 loss team of all time or something like that. Because he did have some talent, so it's the way it goes. Sometimes when you don't have the, the parent team feeding and stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, happy Canada Day. Thanks for requests as usual. Uh, Daniel Bowden, Andrew Lippert, all the great followers of the channel. Savers fan, we love what you're doing. Uh, give, us, give me a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And how is an American celebrates Canada Day? Well, watch the Blue Jays today and just count Jim Carrey's money. I think we're at a billion dollars plus multi multi billion dollars at the box office so stay home count jim carrey's money go on box office mojo add up the money he made and just saying the reason why you americans laugh you got a lot you need a lot of humor because of we canadians ryan reynolds ryan gosling everybody else thanks for listening bye